Hi there, my name is Craig Stevens, and this is the second podcast related to mechanistic versus organic organizational structures, or cultures, organizational cultures. Uh, we're at the website of westbrookstevens.com forward slash organizational dot htm. Uh, you can, once you get that page on the website up, if you scroll down to figure OM3 under mechanistic versus organic, or organic versus mechanistic, you will find a um, PowerPoint slide. And the, and the points of the PowerPoint slide is what we're talking about. Um, this is a makeup course for a systems management class. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these. I think there's uh, seven bullets on this slide. So we're going to talk about those issues related to the seven bullets. The first bullet talks about a close adherence to the chain of command. When we describe mechanistic organizations, there's a close adherence to the chain of command. Now that's not always a bad thing and it's not always a good thing. Uh, I'll give you an example of a situation and then we'll talk about that. A long time ago I was giving a paper related to configuration management, value engineering, and incentive programs for ideas and how to combine those different systems into a single system that, that had checks and balances in it so that, so that the weaknesses of one of those uh, programs would, would build and, and create strengths from the other programs. Uh, in this conference, uh, I decided to get there a little bit early just to check out the, the auditorium, the room that we were in. And I noticed there were three men over in a corner and they were talking about the next speaker. Next speakers is actually a panel discussion. Right before I went on, there was going to be a panel. There going to be five speakers. When I uh, uh, got closer to the men, I heard them talking. And one guy said, there's not a table set up on the stage, and, there's, and there needs to be five chairs. And, and no one's put that up yet. And one guy says, well, that's Jim's responsibility, and he should have done it. It was my responsibility last year, but it's Jim's responsibility this year. And so uh, I went over, and I said, well, I don't mind. I, I, I'll set up the tables for you and put the chairs up. And, and the men looked at me, and one guy said, uh, that we couldn't do that because that would be breaking the chain of command. Use those words. I remember them. Breaking the chain of command. And, uh, and, and that wouldn't be right to Jim because Jim is the one in charge of this. And I did it last year, and it's Jim's responsibility this year. And I said, okay. So I backed off. A couple more men walk in. Had the same conversation over. This is, they're going to have a panel discussion on this stage, and they need two tables, and they need five chairs up there so the panel will have a place to sit. And it's Jim's responsibility, but he's not here. And, and we need these tables because when the men come up, and so that needs to happen. Somebody needs to find Jim. And I went over again, and I said, uh, I said, you know, there's two bus boys over here. If you ask them to put up the table, or I can ask them to put up the table, and I'll help them. And they got the same answer. No, you shouldn't do that, because that would be breaking the chain of command. And we wouldn't want to do that, because I did it last year, and it's Jim's responsibility this year. That's the answer I got. So a little while later, people start filling up the room, right? And... And I noticed that there's still not a table up on stage, still no chairs. And pretty soon, the, <laughs> the announce that the uh, host comes out and, and tries to scurry around putting tables up and chairs. So the people on the panel had to put their own table in front of a whole crowd full of people. And, and, a, and, and everybody's in the auditorium now, right? So the people had to uh, put their own table and chairs up. Um, since I was the speaker after that presentation, I used that in my talk because that is exactly how not to do it. A chain of command works when you're in an organization that requires lots of regulations and lots of, 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 of um, specific ways of doing things, procedural ways of doing things. But 
even in that situation, that was the wrong application of a chain of command. A chain of command has to, well, let's take it this way. We're talking about highly mechanistic. Each one of those gentlemen who had that conversation before the thing started probably came from a highly mechanistic organizational structure. An organic uh, culture on top of that would have made the common sense conclusion and logical conclusion that this is not a critical item. This is not a critical activity and everybody needs to pull together in order to make this whole conference a success because if this conference is a success then we look successful as the officers of this conference. No one made that logical conclusion or came to that logical conclusion. Uh, even when you have a, a close uh, adherence to a chain of command in a mechanistic organizational organization, you need to have a little bit of an organic culture saying that you can go outside of that chain of command when it really doesn't matter, when it's only going to be for the good. And so that's, that's part of a, of a extreme mechanistic organization. That's what you might find. In an extreme mechanistic organization, you'll find functional divisions and silos with highly specialized tasks. There will be a formal hierarchy. Um, it may take you six signatures to get a letter out the door. Uh, there's a lot of times there's there's detailed job descriptions. Uh, in these job descriptions, you have the rights and the obligations and the technical methods to use the job. A lot of vertical integration. Let's see. Uh, the other point, and probably the final point we'll make, is the supervisors will instruct and train and make decisions on the actions and operations and behavior of the employees, of the workers. Now, all of that to the extreme is bad, but there's cases when mechanistic, and we talk about this, when mechanistic is the best way to go. And that's when you're, when the risk is high, there's a lot of regulations because of, of um, pollution prevention. There's a lot of regulations because of of safety and security and a lot of regulations maybe because of records management and we, I think we used the example of a hospital situation before. So that's that's all I have on organic and mechanistic and in the next podcast we'll talk about another subject. We'll talk about the structural dilemmas. My name is Craig Stevens. If you want to reach me you can email me at craigastevens at westbrookstevens.com and the website all of this is located on is westbrookstevens.com forward slash organizational.htm. Thank you and I'll see you in the next podcast.